Stay with us, don't go anywhere, because uh, up next, uh, the OK Senior Final coming up with uh, 24 laps to go through on that beautiful layout of uh, the Circuit of de la Folie here in French, uh, 1.3 uh, kilometer of length, 13 turns, and uh, 36 best drivers in the OK Senior Class. Coming up next, on to the pre-grid for the driver's presentation before we get ourselves ready for some more intense uh, racing. We're going to go through uh, the uh, grids and the 36 competitors in a moment. But uh, what a beautiful spectacle it has been as a very tasty appetizer for the uh, OK class from the junior category. The OK class, uh, with all the drivers aged minimum 14 years, all the 78 entries to start with, representing 31 nationalities all from all around the world. But we, don't, we won't have to see the 78 drivers on track at once, only 36 left for that final. 125cc uh, of the engine with a power train of 39 horsepower, minimum weight, uh, drive inclusive of 150 kilos, and a car with all the fuel, 70 kilos. That's for a bit of a technical stats, 39 horsepower uh, that they have at the back for the 56 drivers uh, making their way out to the track in just a moment. For the tires, they are the same as in the juniors, the Maxxis uh, Prime for the dry conditions and the Maxxis. Uh, uh, rain that we won't be needing this time around. It has been beautiful up until this point, and uh, let's keep it that way, shall we? In the championship standings, as they are, Gabriel Gomez, the uh, young sensation from Brazil, representing CRG, is your current leader after taking the uh, co couple of points into the super heat this morning. And uh, Gabriel Gomez will be leading the way from pole position. Zach Drummond is second in the championship of Timbo Ramakus, Phil McAuklin, Anthony, Anthony Kavalkin and Alexander Bandarev, P6 in the championship. As it stands, this classification will uh, get to change once the final is done with 50 points awarded for the uh, driver that wins it in the end. Uh, Thibaut Ramakos and Zach Drummond were the winners of this year, this uh, morning's Superheat races. Superheat 1 for Thibaut Ramakos, Superheat 2 for Zach Drummond. But Gabriel Gomez is very much uh, in there, in contention to uh, get his hands on the win at the end of this weekend. The opening round of uh, the Champions of the Future in the Oak class was won by Fionn McCoughlin from uh, VDK back in uh, Spain. So Gabriel Gomez has been one of the contenders out there to uh, make a difference. Uh, he will be there. He won earlier in the European Championship in Valencia as well. So he knows what the recipe is for success and it has been absolutely impeccable since the start of the weekend collecting uh, two wins, three wins, shall I even say, into the qualifying heats to put himself uh, ahead uh, of the pack almost with Zach Drummond and Thibaut Ranakers uh, just in front of him. So, Zach Drummond, the British driver, the 281 from Paulin Motorsport, he will be the one to beat, definitely, winner of the Super Heat number two this morning. We had three heat wins uh, yesterday and uh, the day before, as well as a couple of uh, strong top three results. So Zach Drummond has been consistent, he's been patient, and has been rewarded with the maximum points in uh, the uh, super heat. And uh, he's got to get uh, his start from pole position. A look at the back end from uh, the grid, 36 drivers out there. And uh, one of them to keep an eye on is Thibaut uh, Ramakers, the young Belgian sensation from VDK Racing. As, uh, it's good for him to protect himself from the sun because it has been uh, kicking hot here in uh, Val d'Argenton with 23 uh, degrees in the air still. Thibaut Ramakers will be starting on the front row of the grid, but on the outside coming to turn number one with uh, the last handshake from uh, the uh, race director, Mr. Martin Bean, giving him and the uh, pole sitter, Zach Drummond, the latest uh, couple of advice uh, for the proceedings of the start to get going without any problem. Once again, hats off to our Orange Army, the Marshals, les commissaires de piste ici à Val d'Argenton. On les salue, on les remercie. Thanks ever so much uh, to everybody here uh, functioning onto the track, working in uh, collaboration with uh, all the people of RGMMC, all the teams and the factories and the drivers to make sure that uh, we get to do what we love, motorsport and car racing at its best. We certainly do. There is a look at Gabriel Gomez, who finished third in his uh, Super Heat earlier on in the weekend and uh, early on today. And his weekend was good. Qualifying eighth, not the best, not the worst. His qualifying heats, however, 
Three of those was a win. Two second places out there as well. He put himself in a good spot. He's helped himself out in the championship as well as he now extends that uh, lead in the championship. Now he has 132 points from Zach Drummond's 112. Certainly helping him out going into the third round at the Slovakia ring. This driver here starting on the outside of row number two, Noah Wolf, has been... Well, he's been a thorn in the side of many drivers over the course of this uh, weekend. Uh, he's not come away, away. No, he did. He had a qualifying heat win in his last race uh, of the day yesterday, but he was just consistent with his uh, results. A fifth, a fourth, a third, a second, then a win. So he was just getting closer and closer and closer to the front uh, like he did at the end. His uh, qualifying heat, uh, super heat earlier on, only fourth place. He is looking to try and push himself further up in this one in the championship. He sits in seventh in the championship. He's still got a good chunk of points, but he is well behind at the moment. Yeah, we're still we're going to keep an eye uh, certainly very close on the Noah Wolf, as you briefly saw as well. Our good friend Fabrice Dubois once again with us uh, and uh, giving the start to your drivers in the five minute board in the air. Fabrice Dubois, one of the uh, local karting legends in France, a multiple title winner in the Andy Kart categories for the past 20 years. A little hello to the camera, and this is Matteos Morgato, the uh, World champion of the hockey class in 2022 in Sarno, defending the colors of Charles Leclerc and the Birelart factory on the both sides of the ocean as he split his program once again this year between uh, the single speed and gearbox classes in Europe and in the United States as well with a PSL karting among other structures. But uh, Matteo Morgato, good to have him for the first time this season at Champions of the Future. And uh, oh boy, did he do a good job being consistent into the qualifying heats, uh, really uh, bringing his A game into the super heat. It will be one to watch from fifth on the grid. Yindrich Peschel there on your screen, starting alongside the Brazilian. Uh, ninth in his super heat earlier on, but that's not to say his results earlier on in the week were any uh, worse because he got a qualifying heat win. Uh, three second places. Yindrich Peschel has been a driver to really worry about over this one. Uh, qualifying overall 10th in it. He was uh, running ninth in the championship standings. He's now eighth in the championship standings. So he has gained so many positions uh, in this one. Lewis Francis from Australia, another driver who you need to uh, keep a very close eye on. He scored his first championship points this weekend. Uh, he went into the super, uh, today 13th in the championship standings. I believe he's bettered that now. Uh, as he's gone up. Um, no, actually, he's gone down a little bit. No, he's still 13th. There we go. Uh, but still, really good results. Two uh, qualifying heat wins, second, a fourth, and a seventh over the course of the weekend. Uh, and then in the uh, super heat earlier on, that's where it been, went a bit topsy-turvy for him. 18th place he finished that one. It was not the result he would have wanted, but this time he's forgotten about that. That's in the past. Right now is uh, the future. This final, he starts on the fourth row of the grid and crucially on the inside row as well. Yeah, that's crucial indeed. And uh, we've seen in the junior final just before how hard it is to get uh, started on the outside. Uh, you can ask Rocco Cordel, who was... Uh, kicked a little bit uh, on the wheel, that's fair to say, on the outside of the turn one as well, but he was uh, going wide at that point and tumbled down the order a couple of places, still uh, made it back to uh, uh, the top six in the end. But certainly not the result he had been expecting. So watch out for the outside line on the way to turn number one and a little kick to the right uh, coming to the uh, breaking point. Uh, one of the uh, representatives uh, for the past few years of the Car Republic factory, the 203 from Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Joe Turney as a... Uh, Back to his full form as almost uh, George Turney after difficult qualifying, uh, flying through uh, the field, recovering race after race, piling up uh, the positions, and he finds himself on that grid in P8 position on the outside once again. So not easiest, the easiest of job ahead for George Turney, but he's been used to worst, certainly. The uh, Britishman always one of the contenders for uh, one, uh, the driver who is amongst the uh, senior of the past few years in that uh, single speed class. Lewis Werrell on your screen for Forza Racing, second in his superheat earlier on, has been a contender for this season in the senior category, stepping up from the juniors uh, from last year, really having a good show of force with some uh, good results over the course of uh, this weekend. There you saw a brief view of uh, Luna Flusha, and there you can see alive on board with Lewis Werrell starting this one a little further down in the order, starting at uh, P9 on this grid on the fifth row. We'll have the close company of the Prima racing driver, uh, Salim Hana from Colombia, 
uh, starting there. Really keep a close eye on Slim and a really good result over the course of this weekend. There is a look a little further back in the grid. Uh, you can see Mies Huben uh, just getting himself sorted out and ready for this race. Timer nearly at the go time and there you can see the last few drivers ready to get seated gomez always helps his mechanic get the cart started he will get seated once the race has actually gone green there's the whistle there he goes he pushes his cart he jumps in now as we get going for 24 laps in the OK senior final here at Val d'Argentan in France. It's round two at Champions of the Future. Let's take you through the full starting lineup. It's Zach Drummond and Thibaut Ramakers on the front row of the grid. Gabriel Gomez and Noah Wolf on row two from Mateus Morgato and Yindrich Peschel on row three. Lewis Francis and Joe Turney go from row four from Lewis Werrell and Salim Hanar on row five. It's Alexander Bondarev from Ukraine with Mateo Giacardi alongside. Then it's David Cosma Christopher and Finn McLaughlin who did win the final in Valencia starting 14th place. Alan Garcia and Luna Flusha go from row eight with Jimmy Elias and Amelie Cuivisto rounding out row number nine. Row number 10, we do have uh, Ludovico Busso and Noah Montero. Row 11, uh, Kai Hellachts and Kasper Eriksson. Magnodinsky and uh, Javier Javamides. Row 12, row 13, Marcus Kunas and David Potaro. A full Siagi, 13, row 14, row Mace Hoban and Dimitri Madviv, Guillaume Buza and Tidano Monza following on row 15. Row 16, Andy Kansani, Miguel Costa. Row 17, Murilo da Rocha and Yachu Sen. Row 18, Tom Dussel and Alp Akshoy. All the actors are on the stage, 36 of them, as we had 90, uh, 78 sorry, drivers starting the seven, 95 engineers for a total of 173. But at, in the end, only three will get to step on that podium, and only one will be deemed the winner of this year's second round final martin bean the race director of the champions of the future euro series the man in charge on track and the one giving out the orders and the starting procedure we had three attempts for the first final for the junior class let's try maybe for the first time of asking to get green as all eyes now onto the track of val d'argenton that has been reborn over the past few years thanks to the effort of Mr. Sarrazin and his entire team have picked Es Loisir after it had been one of those prestigious tracks back in the 90s, welcoming some prestigious events in the history of karting, a track that has seen some of the uh, great drivers competing on its soil, including the likes of Kimi Raikkonen and Robert Kupitsa, but also Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton, who won on this very track back in 2000 with one arm. Would you believe it or not? Uh, the story is uh, certainly known among the world of karting, but uh, it's worth checking out online about this uh, part of the legend of Lewis Hamilton back in the karting days. Well, we're going to see some new drivers who will in the future be racing in that very paddock as we get ready to go racing. And it's a slow getaway for the outside row. No Wolf didn't get a good start, but it's a great start from the inside row. And it's a great start for Gabriel Gomez in the lead already. He did it earlier on in the weekend. He's done it again now in the final. First place for Gomez, but he's going to lose out of it. Drummond goes wheel to wheel with him as they go down into the hairpin and they do swap positions. The two nearly tangle and now it is the Brazilian Matheus Morgato who leads this final into turn number five. Wow, what a moment that was between the two Brazilians. I thought that for a second that Gomez was going to go cross country but he clipped that curb just before the straight. There was no one else to go pretty much for Gomez but what a heated start. Pretty much get away but a good getaway for most of the drivers. Everybody in for that opening lap. That's what we like to see. But Morgato out of nowhere, pretty much diving through, dancing around his rivals and putting himself in the lead. Gomez in second, Dremon down in third. Then we have Thibaut Ramakers, as well as further back, Lewis Francis, Noah Wolf, Joe Tenney gaining a place in front of Lewis Wero, Bezal Salimana, and David Kosma Christopher. But what a start of a race! And uh, that was heated. We thought for a second that Dremon and Gomez were going to come together. Importantly, not. We're going to have them battling along for 24 laps. But uh, Matthias Morgato, the unexpected third driver into the battle for the lead. Fifth on the grid, first on the uh, opening lap. Now the question is, can he remain in the lead? The pressure is going to be intense because he doesn't have one, not two, but certainly ten of more drivers behind him who are ready to give him the chase. And it's down to uh, the uh, Charles Leclerc machine to give him the powers that he need. Certainly so. Well, look at these two here at the front of this one. Morgato 
leading the way from Gomez, Drummond, Ramakers. Here comes Gomez, though, down the inside and towards turn number one. Morgato's not going to fight it. He'll slot back into second place. Quick check over the shot of thought, right? Fair play. You had the power there. I'll give you the spot but he's not going to let that go easily. He will stay on that rear bumper, and now we'll have to watch out for Drummond, though. Drummond on the other uh, parallel, on the parallel cart there, trying to get through. He just quickly says to Morgato, don't worry about me, you just focus on yourself. You just keep going. I will push you along. Ramakers, though, might have something to say about it as Drummond throws the dummy and sends it down the inside. Ramakers goes through, and so does Francis. Morgato now having to defend from Noah Wolf as he tumbles down the order into P5. Ramakers goes defensive from Francis as they make their way round turn number 12 down in towards turn 13. Francis looking maybe for an overtake here, down in towards turn number one. He's got the slipstream. Well, he communicates there with Ramakers to just say, go, go, go. I won't attack. Whether that's the case, we won't know. But right now, it's Gomez who leads from Drummond, Ramakers and Francis in P4. Well, we saw the sort of dummy that Zach Drummond sent to uh, the, uh, Matthias Morgato on that one because he said exactly the same. Okay, I'll stay with you, as you said, don't worry about me. And then we went diving for the move on la turn number seven. So well done to Zach Drummond. That's part of the game as well. You got to play uh, all the tricks in your book uh, to try to uh, get the advantage. Miguel Costa, another Brazilian on the charge. Oh, a contact, 248, unfortunately. This is David Cosma Christopher into the grass. We might need to see that again, but it might have been a contact there. It was sent into a spin, and that's race done in Dustin, I'm afraid. On lap number four, what a shame for David Cosma Christopher. He was the pole sitter of that class to get a start in this weekend, and this weekend, unfortunately, falls into despair. Yeah, that is a big shame, big, big shame. Uh, well, race continues. Uh, we're starting to see a bit of a two-by-two two, uh, scenario happening here. Gomez and Drummond are starting to break away. Ramakers and Francis uh, have started to flow with each other here. Morgato still there. Who's behind him now? It's Joe Turney. Well, David Cosmo Christopher gets a warning flag. So whatever happened and resulted in him retiring from this race, uh, he is deemed at fault of it. There is Jimmy Helias in a bit of a, uh, a sandwich. He's got Noah Montero just behind. Uh, and then he's got uh, Noah Wolf just in front. It looks like Salim has got past all of them as he's gone through. Yindrich Peschel, I think, has also got through as well. So the battles have really kicked up here as right in front of the commentary box, there's a Tony cart that's facing the wrong way. And who is that? It's the 268 uh, that's out the window. And I think that is Javier Avramides. And there's another spin off the track. And that, to me, is that Salim Hana? Uh, yes, it is. It's Salim Hana off at turn one. And the way he looks shocked, I think that is a s engine seizure there uh, with how it went off the track. Uh, now, I'd, I'd need to see a replay of that because I was looking at the timing screen. I didn't see if it was contact or just mechanical, but Salimina, who was looking so strong for the Bremer team, is out of this one into turn one. And some of the trouble, we've seen some dust kicking on the track on the other side. I think that one of the drivers in the battle was pushed a little bit uh, onto the grass, so we might need to uh, get back to that in just a moment. But uh, it's happening here and there into the field. And oh, the 233, uh, 35, sorry, of CRG. It's not Gabriel Gomez, don't it's worry. Tom Dussol. Tom Dussol, indeed, one of the uh, Brazilian's teammates, unfortunately. Seem to be into some uh, me mechanical trouble, I'm afraid. And that means uh, DNF uh, for him. In the meantime, Gabriel Gomez uh, still very much close as run inside on the 212. This is further back, Jimmy Elias on Noah Wolf, beautifully made by the Victory Lane driver. And it was a close call as we're back with the leaders. Gomez, uh, Drummond, under the close watch of uh, Thibaut Ramakers, further back, Luis Francis, Morgato, that's for your top five. Joe Turney might get himself in the lead. And there's a change, switch for the lead. Zach Drummond goes for the attack. Uh, Gomez. Didn't go too uh, defensive and too aggressive on that one. Still very early into that race. There's plenty of time for the switch. And there he goes as soon as turn number 12. Beautiful piece of driving. Thibaut Ramakers gets in there as well. P2 for the Belgian. And uh, Drummond down to P3. He's going to have to protect. Larry Francis saw that happening. It's possible to overtake on that track. We've seen a plenty of maneuvers. And now Gomez back in the lead with Ramakers as second. Here we go. Drummond's going to send it back down the inside. Wheel to wheel, banging with uh, Timo Ramakers. And backwards he goes. He's still there in third place. Make it fourth, make it fifth. As both Francis, Mugato and Turney all get through. Mugato's going to go defensive. Joe Turney on the attack here. Turney, who qualified 48th, remember, in qualifying. is sliding his way through the field. Down the inside goes Joe Turney. He gets that job done. He gets past Mugato. He gets past Ramakers. 
Lakers. Now Yindrich Special closes in as he tries to get involved. It's Joe Turney up into P4 now as he chases down, but Ramakas sends it back down the inside through turn 12 and denies Joe Turney the chance to break away to the top three of Gomez, Drummond and Francis, who are just eking away now. Down the start finish straight, the slipstream kicks in. Are we going to see any lunges? The answer to that is no. Well, what a battle that is. We have two train of drivers. This one on your picture, the other one between Gomez, Drummond and Francis. Francis who picked up the place at the right time as Thibaut Ramakers is the one having to lead that second group of drivers. He has the pace to do so. The question remains, can he actually apply that pace lap after lap to build his gap on your turny? Borgato is following through with Pezol. Then we have a bit of a gap of 2.6 uh, seconds for Jimmy Elias further down. Uh, six tenths of a second, my apologies, uh, on uh, Basel. Then we have Montero, Hylats, and uh, Garcia just outside of the top ten. The one demonstration that is so far. Still three tenths of a second between, between Drummond and Gomez. Nothing is done yet. This is unlike what we've seen in the junior class with a clear domination. Is a replay of uh, the incident with David Cosma Christopher that uh, contact in turn number seven, leading to the DNF of uh, the Romanian driver, unfortunately. Now, what happened to Salim Hanahe? Yeah, it was, I think, that was an engine seizure. It, the rear axle just locked up and around he goes. So, uh, yeah, he was right in that front spot. And I think, yeah, it was that reaction there that made me think what was uh, what happened to the cart. And, uh, well, yeah, that is a big, big shame. We have had, I don't think we've had any engine seizures so far this week. And there may have been one or two in, uh, in some form of races at the back of the grid, but never a front running cart getting a, an engine seizure as that dramatic uh, down and towards turn one. Well, the, uh, the front pack seems to have simmered down a little bit now after the uh, chopping and changing they'd done earlier on. Gomez has found the pace once more uh, and it started to break away somewhat from Zach Drummond. Drummond, though, only less than three tenths of a second behind. Francis there in third place now has to contend with a very um, exciting driver in now the senior category. Thibaut Ramakers, fastest lap of the race now, 49.7 is starting to close in. Starting to close in indeed uh, for the uh, Belgian driver, who is uh, ever so impressive when he's in trouble. And at the moment, he keep, he's keeping a close watch on Lewis Francis. He's leaving Gomez and uh, Drummond to do the job. But uh, we might find ourselves with a full driver battle heading towards the uh, second part of that race, almost halfway through that 24 lap final. Zach Drummond being chased by Gabriel Gomez from CRG. The battle is wide open. CRG against Zach, against the Paralyan, Zach Drummond. Lewis Francis, Thibaut Ramakers. There's a replay of that move around the inside by uh, Drummond on uh, Gabriel Gomez in the early stages. And then the response. He was quick on the attack, quick on the one. Thibaut Ramakers saw that opportunity, went for the dive, then uh, couldn't do much here and uh, was uh, slightly pushed a little bit wide, staying on the track, but uh, lost two places to uh, uh, Drummond and Lewis Francis back up in place and then two more places with uh, Morgato and Tony and then the switch uh, started to uh, carry on as uh, on the live feed on your right. Uh, look at uh, Hamakos very, very close indeed on Lewis Francis. We're going to maybe uh, have a switch into turn number 12 around the inside. Lewis Francis might have slightly opened the door. No aggressive driving there. This, those two are working together. This is a very smart move, so to speak, because they see both that the gap is increasing. Now it's down to uh, Ramakos to uh, really pull Lewis Francis forward and try to catch up with Gomez and Drummond. Otherwise, already a full second advantage for the leading duet. And uh, if the two behind don't start working together to decrease that gap, well, there won't be any uh, chance remaining for them in the last 12 laps of the race. This gap's come down even more now. Gomez is under pressure from Drummond once again. They were very close uh, at the exit of turn seven of the previous lap. Once again, they're a little bit closer now. Drummond taking a slightly tighter line into the entrance of turn number nine there. He feels like he's got the traction that he needs to do it. Really closes in under braking there. The concertina effect does have an effect there as well. Uh, but look at the gap that's closed down right now. We'll have the slipstream down the main straight. Checks over the shoulder, sees what's the situation. Could see that Ramakers is quite quite a little further down the road uh, as again the two different racing lines coming into play there drummer just consistently holding that gap but it's less than two tenths of a second now he is pushing that parallel motorsport cart to its absolute limits here it is the factory crg team versus the factory parallel team here as they work super hard to really develop these chassis over the course of the seasons and uh, of course uh, over the winter break as well you see so many different variants getting uh, put into uh, production 
uh, for the factory teams are right now they're using these ones right to their limits here we go drummer to the inside he's going to go for it but he's going to well break himself and gomez is going to go wheel to wheel with him side by side through turn 13 oh that's as close as you'd like to get it and now here comes ramakers ramakers into third place he's still there he's going to try and get involved in this fight but he's got to be careful here Two carts is fine, three's a crowd, and for Drummond, he dives it to the inside. Ramakers follows, Ramakers gets two for one. Does he get two for one? Yes, he does. Ramakers from third to first leads this final in Val d'Argenton. Here comes Gomez to the inside again. He goes wheel to wheel with Drummond. Oh no, and now Drummond goes backwards. Drummond goes backwards, and it's Francis and Turney up into, uh, in fact, it's Turney up into second place. Joe Turney in the 203 is in P2 right now. Well, what a ton of a fan that is. This is lap number 15 out of 24. We're getting near the latest stage of that race. And now it has been turned completely upside down, ladies and gentlemen. If you're joining us right now, well, you pick your moment. Tibor Remakers not only got in the lead, but built the gap of almost a second. Gomez in trouble with Matthias Morgato just behind, as well as Zach Drummond. Drummond and Gomez were leading the race just a lap ago. And now nothing of it as Drummond keeps on getting back. But in the meantime, Rackers is pulling away. He had another faster slap in the race. And Joe Turney, the British man, 48 in qualifying, and now finds himself on the podium in second place. Lewis Francis. And we do have as well yeah. one of the Premas that Th we lost that's in That's Alexander process. Bondarev. That is on the Alexander Bondarev, Bondarev in the other Prema cart. Oh, what a shame. Is out of this race. Now he's gone off at turn 13 there. We've already seen an engine seizure for one Prema cart. Is that another? for the second because he was running in around the mid-pack there. I don't know if it was involved in an incident or that is just a mechanical failure, uh, but that is two Prima carts now out of this race. Uh, back at the front, well, it's Ramakers who leads the way now as we go on to lap 17 of 24, and he's got a gap now of one second. Can Turney close that in? That is the ultimate question. Has he looked after those tyres to now really push them at this stage of the race to close a one second gap? The answer to that, I may think is yes, because now it's less than a second. Less than a second, as uh, Joe Tony is having the support, so to speak, of his teammate at Car Republic, Lewis Francis, down in third. And uh, Gomez and Drummond still battling, certainly not what they had been expecting, as uh, Adios Morgato still have a shot at the podium, certainly. He's keeping a close watch, following it through. Drummond and Gomez, watch on as Drummond goes around the inside of uh, the Asiago driver, while Dr. Drummond up in the place before for the British driver from Paulin, looking over his shoulder. Gomez still very much on the chase. Then further back, we have one of the Saudis, and this is Kai Rilartz, P7, in front of uh, Jedris Pezel. Pezel was uh, in the upper part of that field before uh, dropping a little bit of momentum, and now he finds himself behind the Belgian driver, who is uh, one of the few drivers before uh, coming to Val d'Argento, with uh, certainly a bit more experience of that track uh, from uh, different races in the past. That might serve him well until the end, as he climbed a couple of positions, 14 places gained, and we lost a 268 of Tony Cart. In the meantime, that was uh, uh, this is uh, Javier Ramirez actually from earlier yes. into the race, but this card is still laying onto the ground. And uh, confirmation of the DNF for Alexander Bondar. If Guillaume Bouzard didn't have the best of finals so far, trailing down at the back end of the grid, and we enter into lap number 19. Joe Turney, eight of the grid, second currently, 1.4 seconds. Here's a response from Thibaut Ramakers, 49.7. This is qualifying lap we're talking about from the young Belgian. We certainly got the advice from the sideline from his VDK mechanic and partners. Now it's time to push. Don't just get yourself caught into a nap. Uh, even though we know it's lovely, we know it's sunny, but it's no time for sleeping just now. As uh, the response was uh, four uh, more uh, tenths of a second now for George Turney. And uh, Turney who finds himself still under you know, the pressure of Lewis Francis. That's going to be interesting to see the dynamic between those two because at some point, if Lewis Francis realize that Tony cannot pick up the pace and maybe get close to uh, Ramakos for the victory. He might actually try to go for second place, try to avoid any contact because you don't want to jeopardize what could be a 2-3 finish for Car Republic. Now remains to be seen as Zach Drummond a little bit on his own right now with Gomez and Morgato, the two Brazilians, observing each other. Gomez must be certainly furious under the helmet because he was leading the way in the opening stages and then it fell apart quite quickly in the space of two corners for the Brazilian. He's been uh, so dominant uh, very uh, recently in uh, Valencia, the Fire Karting Championship, and now finds himself thrilling at the back of the top five. 
So, well, on to lap 20 now. And Ramakers, like you say, continuing to break away. Here, though, Gomez starting to fade a bit. These two were battling for first and second in the early laps of this final. Now they're battling well down the order as down the inside. Morgato gets that move done, gets ahead of Gomez, moves up now into P5. Like you say, you're battling fifth and sixth place on the track up to the, yeah, that were fighting at the front. And it, it's just a case of the stage of this race. These tyres, you know, they work so well. They can put in new lap records at any track they go to in the first two, three, four laps that they've got. And then after that, they go into their consistency phase. They uh, they drop off a, a cliff and then, yeah, they, they, they go consistency for a really long time. And that's why they can last so long. And that's where you get such consistent racing across the board. So uh, really good on that one. And now Gomez is under investigation. Now, what is that for in particular? Was it for the race start? Was it for an incident out on track? We didn't see anything on the cameras at any point, or maybe we did and we just don't know. So, uh, well, there you go. There's a question mark over the Brazilian Gabriel Gomez, uh, your current championship leader, uh, still with the virtual championship as well, with 158 points, Zach Drummond second. Uh, Tony would move up to fifth uh, behind, uh, just ahead of Peschel, and Francis would move up to seventh. Uh, all of them with 73, 72 and 66 points. Drummond would be second from Ramakers and McLaughlin would still be fourth. Uh, Finn McLaughlin, we've not said much about him. He's 10 seconds further down the road. He's in P17. That is uh, obviously the, the winner of the final in Valencia. He's nowhere here in France. Yeah, that's quite a shame considering that uh, one of his teammates, Ramakers, is on his way to pick up that win in that same race. So something went wrong uh, certainly for Finn McLaughlin through the course of his uh, qualifying heat. All started uh, back in qualifying for the young uh, Irish driver. So he was only 31 in qualifying to start with and uh, picked up a couple of strong results, including a P3 uh, finish. But it wasn't enough, certainly, for him to uh, start as high as he would have liked. And when uh, you get to go from 14 on the grid, certainly no easy task at this level. So there will be revenge in here, certainly uh, as soon as the next round in Slovakia for Firma Coughlin as uh, Thibaut Ramakers uh, will make it to in a row for VTK Racing after the first two rounds of Champions of the Future. Marcus Kunas uh, picking up a warning flag for the CRJ driver, the 230, who at the moment is uh, a little bit uh, further back into the classification as, it's, as it stands. 24, Marcus uh, Silconas just behind David Botaro. Two strong drivers from CRJ that, uh, fortunately, whose final didn't pay off in the end. As uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the last lap of that last race already. 36 of them this weekend. A quick look over the shoulder. 2.7 seconds, my dear friend Thibault. There's no worry in the world. You can even allow yourself for a very nice last lap. Uh, right. Well, there is Alexander Bodarev. You can see his Ricard getting recovered earlier on. This was the move for Morgato. This might be, not this one here, but the reason why uh, Bondarev in the gravel might be the reason why we could be seeing that investigation flag coming out. This was the overtakes uh, from Drummond again, getting back up into that sharp section earlier on in the race. But uh, still, question marks looming over some of our top drivers. But nothing over this young man here. Thibaut Ramakers from Belgium. What can you say? He won his super heat earlier on to start on the front row of this grid. And now he will win the final here in France. It is Belgium's Thibaut Ramakers who takes the win here at Val d'Argentan ahead by 2.8 seconds from Joe Turney and Louis Francis in third place. For Belgium, it is fine form with Thibaut Ramakers on top here in France. Beautiful performance for Thibaut Ramakers. Uh, the revenge has been taken by the Belgian after a difficult first final in Valencia. He uh, made it to P10 after starting in the front row back on the Shiva circuit. This time around, once again on the front row. This has been an eventful final in the senior class. But in the end, Thibaut Ramakers prevailed. And the congratulations are in order from Phil McCaughlin. That's very nice uh, to see. That's another victory for VTK Racing after Valencia. Val d'Argenton for the Belgian team of the uh, Verdas Donc Brothers. Congratulations to them. And uh, that's another strong result for the Car Republic chassis with, well, the three positions on the podium this time around with a uh, driver from VDK and a two driver from the uh, Car Republic Motorsport, Joe Tony and Lewis Francis. They, they had two of them with McCoughlin and Bondarev on the podium in Valencia. Gabriel Gomez on the first step of the podium in Spain, this time around P6, despite uh, starting from third on the grid and leading partially in the opening stages, but he had to make do with that. 
behind Zach German and Matthias Morgato. Jesus Pezel running up in the top seven from uh, Dimitri, Dimitri Madviv, one of the recoverers of the day. 20 places gained up to P8 from Kai Relatze, Aaron Garcia, Noah Montero, Mace Oben, Emily Corristo, uh, Jimmy Elias, uh, Lewis Warrell, P15, P16 is uh, Noah Wolf uh, in front of Fiamma Cochrane, Ludovico Bosso, Casper Eriksson, Miguel Costa, Matteo Giacardi, Luna Fruscia, P22, uh, from Davide Montaro, Marcus Circunas, Tiziano Monza, Andy Gonzani, Murillo da Rocha, Tom Dussol, Magnum Linsky, and Guillaume Buzar. We lost six drivers in the course of that final. And at the uh, top of the classification, the uh, finger in the air, Ala Vettel, Thibaut Ramakers from VDK Racing, the uh, young sensation from Belgium, one of the members of the RACB national team from the uh, Belgian Motorsport Federation, along with uh, Dries van Lagendonck, one in junior, one in OK, and marvelous results for, from, for both of them. And uh, the one for Thibaut Ramakers, among the drivers that we lost uh, through the race, David Cosma Christopher was sent, uh, was sent into a spin. Uh, Xavier uh, Avramides, as well as uh, an engine seizure for Selim Hanna. We still don't know precisely what happened to Alexander Bondar. Unfortunately for Bondi, the Bison, this was race over into turn number 13. And uh, DNF as well for Al Baxoy and Chachutsen. You could see that uh, very funnily. Thibaut Ramakers was uh, at the back end of the queue coming to the Parc Fermé and the scrutinizing area. All the drivers have obviously to make a pass to the scale before making their way to the podium. In the meantime, let's have a look at the replays and how things played out with uh, Gabriel Gomez uh, taking a beautiful start on the inside line, taking the lead as soon as turn number one in front of the Paul Sitter, Zach Drummond. A clean start for everybody into the turn one and first section of corner, so nothing to worry about. As uh, we thought for a second that there might have been a touch and those two were finishing the grass, but uh, Drummond was trying to fight back in front of uh, Gomez. He achieved his uh, overtaking. That was the moment when Gomez, when clipping the curb into turn number four, he held on to the racing line, kept control of his machine, and uh, was still in P2. That allowed Matheus Morgato, though, to uh, take the lead in front of uh, Gomez and Drummond before the Brazilian would uh, uh, fall down the stairs just a tiny bit with. Uh, Thibaut Ramakers and Lewis Francis forcing their way through just in front of uh, Noah Wolf. Zach German and Gomez had already made their pass. Uh, David Cosma Christopher, a little bit of a nudge and unfortunately a spin into the grass and a DNF at a very early stage. The seizure for Selim Hanna, and that's a real shame for the Prima Racing Car Republic driver who is uh, interrogating his engine about what happened. As uh, Selim Hanna has been consistent, he has been strong all throughout the weekend, and this is a very poor reward for the performances of uh, the uh, Prima Racing driver. In the meantime, the battle kept ranging between Zach Drummond and uh, Gabriel Gomez. The move for the lead, the response for Gomez into turn number 12. The door was open, going a bit wide to Drummond, and so Thibaut Ramaku is taking P2 before responding quite heavily, clipping the curb on the inside, fair and square, as Ramaku, while opening the door, left under the position on the table to the 257 on Lewis Francis. At that point, we thought, hey, is it maybe over? just yet for Thibaut Ramakers, tumbling down the order down to P6, and then the charge had started. First on Morgato with Jerzy Pezel in blue just behind, and then on uh, the uh, Kyle Puppet drive just in front of him. So that was Joe Turney in the middle as well. Next one, Lewis Francis for P3, with Turney following through in just a few moments after. And uh, in the meantime, still Zach Drummond and Gabriel Gomez battling along. We thought that we would end up with that three-driver battle up for the lead. It was before the others would join in. Ron in turn number 13 at full speed, pretty much. Gabriel Gomez not letting himself impressed by the paralleling driver. The British driver just went ahead once again, opening the door wide open. And it was enough for Thibaut Ramakers to have dive himself, dive around the outside and inside and taking the lead back. And from that point on, he let the others get into the battle behind, and uh, you could see that Drummond uh, left the momentum. He was uh, caught a little bit on the outside. The momentum wasn't for him, and it allowed both Joe Tony and Lewis Francis through for second and third. The incident at number 13 for Alexander Bondarev, uh, and fortunately for Bondi de Bazin, last year's European champion in the junior class out of this race. In the meantime, Matthias Mogato and Gabriel Gomez battling around uh, further back under the close watch of uh, Zach Drummond. The favorites at the lead found themselves at the back of that queue and uh, were left battling for the uh, rest of uh, the pieces as uh, Gomez falling onto that position in front of Matthias Morgato at the wheel of that Charles Leclerc machine. Uh, Jesus Pezel in the meantime 
doing a great job getting ahead of the two knights three of Kai Relatz from Sodicart. In the meantime as well, Morgato getting ahead of Gomez finally. But in the end, far in front of the rest of the field for 2.8 seconds. It was victory for Thibaut Rackers and the VDK racing team. That beautiful machine of Car Republic in the Chetila racing colors prevailing in a hectic okay, uh, final of 24 laps here in Val d'Argenton. Give it up for your top three at the end of the Champions of the Future round two here in France. We'll now like to welcome onto the podium James Guidel, the CEO from our GMC, to present the third place trophy to Louis Francis. The second place trophy now to the United Kingdom's Joe Turney. And your race winner for Belgium, it's Thibaut Ramakas. And of course, the team's trophy to Kenny Rusens from VDK. Drivers get those trophies to the side there. Nice big smiles for our photographers out there. And remember, for the next photo, we'd like you to hold those trophies nice and high up in the air. Trophies above your heads. Nice big smiles for me, please. Absolutely superb. There we go. And then the very last thing, drivers, all of you on that top step, one nice big group photo, everyone up there. Kenny, you can stay there as well. You're part of them. You might want to go away, though, for the next bit because you don't want to get covered in the, uh, the next bit, do you? Nice big smiles for our top three. Brilliant stuff there. Well, a superb one there. VDK on the top, but it's a Cut Republic chassis. One, two, three. Uh, if we now like to present the champagne bottles to our top three drivers. Kenny, our duck and cover at this point now as we get ready. After a, a beautiful day of racing in the sun here, it's time for champagne. Well, I've got to say, Thibaut, I think, bore the brunt of all of that champagne there. And uh, Thibaut, I'm going to jump in right now and have a... Uh, a quick chat with you, uh, Thibaut. Come on over on this side. Sorry, Joe. I'm going to stand in the way of you there, Thibaut. Uh, well, what a final that was in the sunshine here in France. Let's talk about it. The start was a shaky one. You had a lot of work to get through the field. Talk us through that race. Yeah, I make a bad start. But after I make a few good overtake, and uh, I was fast, so I make a gap after, and uh, I'm very happy. This now helps you out in the championship as well. Come around a, a little bit this way. There we go. Uh, this helps you out in the championship as well, uh, getting up a few in those points. There's still three rounds to go. We go to Slovakia next. Uh, any experience at the Slovakia ring, or is that a brand new circuit for you as well? Uh, it's a brand new circuit. Uh, I'm impatient to discover it. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy because I gained some place for the championship. Uh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Well done on the final win here in France, and uh, we'll see you in Slovakia. Yeah, thank you. Excellent stuff there, Timo Ramikas. Congratulations taking the top spot on that one. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of the Champions of the Future round two here at Val d'Argenton in France. We do head to the Slovakia ring uh, next in Slovakia for round three, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. But from us here in France for the Champions of the Future round two, it's goodbye for now.